50 years later, their passion still fills a room. They were freedom riders who challenged Jim Crow's travel rules, divided buses, separate waiting depots, and race-based restrooms. With me are part of a group calling themselves the Freedom Riders. It was spring 1961 when the first 13 Freedom Riders planned a two-week trek from Washington, D.C. They would take two buses through the Deep South. Fifty years ago, they... Hank Thomas was just 19 when he boarded the bus. We had no thought of any kind of violence. But violence would come 10 days later. Outside of Anniston, Alabama, Thomas's bus was surrounded by the Klan and set on fire. He and five others were almost burned alive. I was looking for the easiest way to die. Hours later, in Birmingham, the second bus, carrying seven others, was met by pipes and bats. James Peck lost six teeth and was knocked unconscious. We must not surrender to violence. Diane Nash was a 22-year-old junior at Fisk University in Nashville. It was critical that at that moment we not allow the rides to stop. She recruited 10 new students and a second wave of Freedom Riders boarded a bus to Alabama. More than 400 others across the country would join them. A seven-month campaign that, college students came down from Nashville with that is now a PBS documentary. Well, it's the start of the Civil Rights Movement. You know, you see it becoming a movement around the Freedom Rides. The rides pressured the Kennedy administration to finally enforce federal law, desegregating interstate buses and public accommodations. Don't you let nobody. Now in their 70s, many of the Freedom Riders recently reunited in Chicago to remember those lessons learned. Nonviolent direct action has power. It's hard to argue with success. Success of a movement that changed their lives and the nation. Russ Mitchell, CBS News, Birmingham, Alabama.